And the thing that's interesting about the red wattle is their fat is different. Um, they're called red wattle because they have wattles on the side of their necks and it does change, it controls their temperature. And I do believe it has a play into their fat because their fat is very different than other pork fat. It cooks into the meat. So it, yeah, it, it's, it's different. And so it's not like coarse and just sits out there. It literally cooks into the meat and gives the meat more flavor, but the fat is a very healthy fat. You're listening to the Nutrition World Podcast, a show about navigating the intricacies of holistic wellness. We're a natural health food store located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we believe that optimal health and peak performance should be accessible to everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nutrition World's podcast. We are so honored to have our guest here, Grace Frank. Um, She is a local farmer, fourth generation family farmer, and just a wealth of knowledge on farming, on um, chickens and turkeys and pigs. And we were chatting before and I'm learning things about, you know, all of this that she was sharing with me. And so today the goal of this podcast is really to speak about her farm, what makes it unique and how these animals are raised and then ultimately how they are harvested here um, and then you know, into food that we're going to consume. And so we're honored to have her today and, and her um, name of the farm. And let's go into all that. And okay. Yeah. Um, so our farm is Land to Table Farm. Mm-hmm. We created it from scratch. Uh, we purchased the land in 2014, 2015, and really wanted to do it from scratch so we could focus on permaculture, sustainability. Uh, so we have a lot of permaculture on the property. We designed um, everything, uh, really focusing on passive solar, Mm -hmm. uh, solar, rainwater catchment. So we have all that in place at the farm. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. And so tell me how you got into this as a lifestyle and as a, you know, a farmer. Well, um, I grew up in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually a fourth generation farmer from South Dakota, probably more. All of my family for generations have been farmers Mm -hmm. from Germany and Norway. Wow. And so um, my grandparents and my great-grandparents came to South Dakota, my great-grandparents on a covered wagon, and um, my grandfather heard that they were giving away free farmland. And so at the age of 13, he got on a train in Nebraska and went to South Dakota to declare his farmland. Wow. Yeah. So uh, both sides of my family are farmers. And I, you know, I grew up in the environment. I'd always spend my summers at my grandparents' farms. And when we moved here about 15, 16 years ago from Boulder, Colorado, my husband had an interest in getting back into farming. His father, great-grandfather was a farmer Mm -hmm. um, in Florida. And so um, we said, well, let's let's try to f- discover some land. And it took us about three years to find the land that we felt had the topography we were looking mm-hmm. for and just the unique aspects. So it's only like 25 minutes from downtown Chattanooga, but it's very peaceful and quiet and has a lot of unique terrain. We have a wetland area. We have a beautiful big pasture. We have a plateau. We have a forest. Wow. So we have a lot of different topography that we can do different things. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. I'd love to come visit yeah, sometime. You, yeah. We have uh, open house days and we also do events at the farm. So it's a great experience. And we have a tiny home where we do farmcations. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So we have a lot of people that do that from all over the country. They come here to hike yeah. and be on the water. And our farm is 20 minutes from Cloudland Canyon. Mm-hmm and 15 minutes from Lake Nickajack, and 25 minutes from Foster Falls. So it's a really nice grounding place to go a lot of different places. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so cool. So for people that may not be as familiar with like a sustainable farm, you've described it somewhat, but that literally means that you almost have everything in this synergistic type flow, right? Yes, Where we do. water is available for the animals Correct. kind of naturally, and then there's food that they can graze on naturally. And explain that a little bit more. <clears throat> so... Um, 
We have a combination of pasture and paddocks. Um, this time of year, it's very difficult to have pasture, but they we still let them go into the pasture areas, but it's as pigs are. Um, a lot of farmers don't like pigs because um, they can damage pastures. Mm, so okay. we've created pasture areas in our ecosystem um, where they're at, which is a natural old growth forest mm-hmm. that is integrated with a wetland area. So um, they have paddocks. They are fed all natural feed. We use a mill locally that's within 100 miles of us that has uses all local farmers, all non-soy, non-GMO, non-corn, mm. um, all created here within 100 miles of um, our farm. And we also have pasture. But this time of year, they're relying more on their feed versus sure. pasture because – there's not a lot of grass right now, mm-hmm. but we do a combination of pasture and all healthy, natural, organic feed. Wow. <clears throat> okay. And then get into a little bit of all the animals that you do have. Yeah. So we raise red wattle as our pigs. Mm-hmm. Um, they are one of the oldest breeds. They are a heritage breed and they're almost extinct and we're helping bring the breed back. Mm-hmm. So we have a full breeding program. We have, we create, you know, we We raise them from babies. They're uh, bred on our farm. They're born on our farm. And they live on the farm till either they're harvested Mm -hmm. or they continue as part of our breeding stock. Oh, wow. So we have a full breeding program, and then we have a full harvesting program. So the feed is similar. Um, The harvest feed, we very much focus on non-soy, non-corn, non-GMO. The breeding stock, they're non-soy and non GMO, um, but they do get some corn. Okay. <clears throat> um, but we're not harvesting them. Right, so. right. <laughs> uh, but it's it's a great breed. It's a beautiful breed. They're kind of like the bison of pork. Okay. They're very lean and they're very flavorful. And most people who try it really see the difference in this pork. Mm-hmm. I it's definitely a, it's did. It's a very unusual it's it really is kind of like the bison of pork, and that's mm-hmm. the best way to describe it. I think that's a good way to describe it yeah. because honestly, I'm not a huge fan of pork, and I was speaking about that before. Um, you know, I've eaten pork some in my life, but I would oftentimes heard it was a dirtier, you know, food, or just worried about maybe where it was sourced from. And some of the pork, even when I would cook it, um, had a smell of maybe a little dirty. You know, I don't know. I just yeah. didn't love pork, so I haven't eaten it a lot. Then I had your pork and loved it, loved it. I mean, clean, lean, like you mm-hmm. said. I almost had to add actually a little bit of avocado oil or olive mm-hmm. oil while yeah. cooking it because yeah. it was that lean, yeah. which is great. Yeah. I mean, and had the um, we had sausage links on Christmas morning from you, and I had five, and I don't eat sausage links, and I <laughs> loved it. So really, really clean and like no no other taste but just a clean meat. Yeah, you know. Well, yeah. we work really hard. They're in a great environment. They're loved their entire lives. Mm. And uh, when we go to the butcher, um, we call it harvesting mm-hmm. because we feel that's a more healthy, natural way. And that's what we are doing. Mm-hmm. We're harvesting. I like that. Uh, and they they really can tell a difference with our pork compared to a lot of the other farmers. Mm-hmm. They say that our pork, our pigs are a lot healthier. Really? Um, they look a lot better. And when they start to process them, they can see a real big difference even in the meat. Mm. So we do take a, and they're very friendly and they don't have any issues with them because we handle them from day one. Wow. So they're loved a lot. They're, they're handled a lot. Mm-hmm. They're not, they're used to being around people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. I'm and sure where we take them to process them, it's underground processing above Dunlap. Mm-hmm. It takes us a couple of hours to get there, but they are gourmet butchers. They do beautiful cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, we even have porterhouse pork chops, um, and they are very good at sausage makers. All of our ground pork mm-hmm. is ground ham, so it's not scrap meat. We mm-hmm. literally take the ham and grind it into brats, breakfast sausage, wow. um, breakfast sausage links, mm-hmm. ground pork, so it's not scrap meat, it's pure mm-hmm. ground ham with a little bit of their fat. And the thing that's interesting about the red wattle is their fat is different. Mm-hmm. Um, they're called red wattle because they have wattles on the side of their necks. Okay. And it does 
changed that controls their temperature. Mm. And I do believe it has a play into their fat because their fat is very different than other pork fat. Mm -hmm. It cooks into the meat. Mm. So oh, it, yeah. yeah, it it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like coarse and just sits out there. Yeah. It literally cooks into the meat and gives the meat more flavor. But the fat is a very healthy fat. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a different flavor. Yeah, that makes total sense. So maybe that's why there's not a lot that you have to drain off or a, a not a lot that you're seeing kind of pulling to the side. You're not. Yeah. And that's what's interesting. I mean, when you get a ground, a pound of pork, you truly get a pound of pork. So you're not paying more for it. You're getting a lot more value mm -hmm. for your meat because it doesn't shrink up sure. like most pork does. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so these are, you said about 800 pound, like, or bigger than that, huge well, pigs? Well, the breeding stock, our boars are around 650 to okay. 700 pounds. Our female sows that are breeding stock are 400 to okay. 500 pounds. And we when we harvest them, they're about 250 to 300 pounds. Okay. Um, and they grow very fast. Mm -hmm. We can harvest them at eight months. Oh, wow. So their meat is not, it's, you know, when you're, when you're harvesting a pig at eight, a year to a year and two months versus eight months, the meat is, you know, you're, it's not so long. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As age yeah. in terms of their meat. So it's, it, it also helps with the quality of the meat. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do pigs actually roll in mud like people think? Oh, they love mud. They do? Yeah. <laughs> they love mud. They do. That's cute. That's funny. So how many pigs at one time are you like breeding and harvesting? Like what's a we number? We typically that... have between 60 and um, 75 pigs at oh, our wow. farm at one time. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And do you <clears throat> like, you recognize them or no? Oh, we have names. Okay. That's All our breeding stock has names. Okay. Our harvest stock is called... Hamlet or bacon. <laughs> but we do have names for all of our breeding stock and they know it and we brush them and they're scratched and rubbed Aww. a lot and they're wow. very friendly pigs. They're not aggressive pigs at all. Wow. That's the other reason I really like them. And they're great for small batch farmers mm -hmm. because they're very friendly. They're easy to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and I like helping other farmers get involved with the red wattle. Yeah. So. We oh, do that cool. as well. We we do sell some of our breeding stock. Okay. And then tell me some other animals you have on your farm. So we got into turkey last year. Um, never had raised it, but really love them. They're really fun birds, and mm -hmm. they're very friendly and inquisitive, and they're very gentle. Mm -hmm. So we started last year just doing it for Thanksgiving, and I really liked them. And nobody around here is doing fresh local turkey mm -hmm. so i thought well that's a really good niche nobody's doing it yeah. and the community needs it so now we're actually um harvesting every month turkey so we have ground turkey turkey sausage links mm. turkey drumsticks turkey Yum. wings um all natural same you know their pasture and old growth forest mm -hmm. And um, they're also fed the same company turkey product. So mm -hmm. it's all non-soy, non-corn, non-GMO, wow. all natural sourced food. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you can really taste the difference. And we have different breeds mm -hmm. uh, depending on <clears throat> the breeds that are very good for um, Thanksgiving turkeys mm -hmm. are our Kentucky bourbons. Mm. Um, and so we raise a lot of those for Thanksgiving turkeys. And then year round, we use um, uh, other types of heritage turkeys that are faster growing, um, but they also are bulkier. And so we have a heart larger meat source. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then chickens too, right? We do organic duck and chicken eggs. So okay. we don't do any chicken meat or duck meat. Uh, we strictly stay with the, the organic eggs. So we have what we call a chicken bus that we move around our plateau that helps nurture the uh, grass as well. Okay. And we move it about every six to eight weeks. And then our ducks have a duck house that they go in at night and we let them out in the day and they go all over the plateau and they have a big duck pond oh, cool. and they have a really nice life. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but they know at four or five, they're going in their duck house and you know what they call it? I'll get your ducks in a row. Mm hmm they really do do ducks in a row really? when they single file into their duck what? house. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and they just stay in there for the night and sleep? They stay in or? there for the night, and that's where they lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, that's the easiest way to handle ducks 
Otherwise, it's a it's an Easter egg hunt every day for decades. Oh, really? Okay. So that's why we put them up at night, uh, and they lay their eggs by nine thirty in the morning. Wow. And we let them out, and then we put them up at four to five at night. Okay. And so, how often does a duck lay an egg? It depends on the breed. Okay. Um, like this time of year, we're not getting as many duck eggs, but typically every other day. Okay. Or so. And how many are they laying? Um, one egg a day. One egg. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Each duck lays, lays one egg. Okay. But you know there are meat ducks, but we have our breeds are more of a duck egg laying mm-hmm. breed. We have khaki ducks. Uh, Indian runners, which are fun because they stand up tall like a penguin and mm. walk, and they're really cute. Aww. And then uh, golden. So those are the breeds that we have that are a larger, higher producing uh, egg layer. Okay. So. Wow, I can't even imagine what this looks like. It sounds like such a. It's cool really farm. fun. It's a really yeah. beautiful, and we're very we're into artists, so we have a lot of beautiful art on the farm. Oh, cool. Um, we also have a passive solar green house with hydroponics really so we are doing hydroponics and raised beds it's just not our primary source Mm -hmm. um we do fingerling potatoes and we do kale and spinach but mostly it's for the farm family Mm -hmm. and then extra we'll bring to the farmer's market but um we do have towers the or you know the hydroponic towers Mm -hmm. as well as the hydroponic beds that we raise vegetables in oh wow yeah. Okay. And so describe to me like a day in the life of a farmer, like what you're doing. Cause I know you're probably working long hours. So and I have staff because I also have a full-time career. Um, but typically I work the farm on weekends and I do the farmer's markets and I do all the marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an MBA in marketing, so okay. I like to be in charge of the marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, <clears throat> we, Focus, first of all, the first thing in the morning is getting on the internet and doing social media Mm -hmm. to reach out to people that day about what's going on and just kind of, you know, grab people's attention. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we do about two hours of feeding in the morning, Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, because we have pigs and turkeys and chickens and ducks and a lot of moving parts And watering right now, we have a lot of baby plants that we're Mm -hmm. bringing up. So, um, you know, in the greenhouse, in our baby room, we call it our nursery. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, there's just a lot of moving parts, but then we have projects. So you're always cleaning Mm -hmm. uh, pens or, you know, areas where, like right now, uh, we have baby chickens Mm -hmm. in different ages of life because we try to bring in fresh chickens um, and ducks at least two times a year to three times a year. So our herd and our flock is always strong and vibrant. Gotcha. A lot of farmers like try to get everything at once, which makes no sense because if you stage it, Mm. then you're always having a young, vibrant herd. And those that are staging out is not like a huge number so it's easy. It's smarter to do your livestock that way okay. than have everything the same age. Gotcha. <clears throat> so we really focus on that. Okay. Um, for our birds and um, turkeys, we you can't buy baby turkeys between November and the end of February. They just don't. They're just not available. Okay. Uh, so we have a couple of nurseries that we. Uh, purchase most of our animals, our flock from, but we did hold back two breeding pairs this year so we can start to raise our own eggs so we can also have our birds as well as the birds that we purchased. Gotcha. So hopefully we can have more babies in January and February, turkeys are very hard as babies. Are they? You can lose up to 50% of your baby turkeys. Wow, why? They're just really tough the first three weeks. Okay. So they're very sensitive. You can't, you have to have warm water. Okay. They have to have lots of electrolytes. Really? Uh, they're very, yeah, they're very sensitive. So we've created a very intense nurse, nurse, nur- a nursery for mm-hmm. all of our birds to maximize our success rate. Gotcha. So, but it's still, you can lose a lot of baby turkeys, which is challenging mm-hmm. 
particularly when you're paying between $12 to $20 for one baby mm-hmm. turkey. Wow. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. they're, they're a lot more expensive than the ducks and the chickens. You can buy a baby chicken for 2 to $5, same okay. with ducks. But turkeys are, the cheapest is $9, and that's buying a whole bunch of them. But the majority, you're paying 12 to $15 for one baby turkey. Wow. Yeah. So oh, that's wow. why turkey meat is more expensive. Okay. Just because, gotcha. I mean, you can lose a lot more turkeys. We've had a lot of challenges with turkeys this last year. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of areas lost a bunch of turkeys. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and they're harder to grow at a young age. And um, they do eat a lot, too. Okay. So Wow, I had no idea about yeah. all that. <laughs> so I guess, you know, the reason I'm so happy that we got you on our podcast here and that we're talking is if you're listening, Nutrition World now carries like a, a lot of your stuff. Yeah, we're so, very excited you are. Yes, we're honored and so excited. <clears throat> and so it have, will be our exclusive store. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was the case. Yeah. But So we have a huge meat freezer now. And so if you're local to Chattanooga, I know some of you might not be if you're listening, but hopefully if you're local or with any, you know, sort of radius, um, tell the items that we have right now from you. So um, you don't have everything, but we're growing it. Mm -hmm. So right now they have um, our pork chops, our brats, our country style ribs, our breakfast links, Mm -hmm. our breakfast sausage that's loose. Mm -hmm. And I believe you have some ground ham, ground pork as well. We do, yep. Um, And then they also have some of our ground turkey. Mm -hmm. And next week we'll be able to add, if you guys want it, our ground turkey links. Yeah. And we also will have some drumsticks. Yeah, we'd love to add this. Yeah. (laughs) We've got just enough little freezer space that Christy and I, another um, employee at the store, have been pushing to really make this whole one freezer just for meat. And so we've got like a couple, I think, raviolis in there that we're moving on out so we can make room for all the meat. And you do have our uncured bacon, but next week we'll also have cured bacon. Yeah, we want that. Yeah. Which is all, it's, it's created all naturally from celery salt. So... The butcher that we use is very focused on healthy, natural, um, and they know that we have our clientele is very naturally oriented, Mm -hmm. very healthy oriented. So all of the products that they use in our processing are all natural and very healthy. That's wonderful. It's just so ideal. It's from start to finish exactly what we look for in a meat supplier and a a farmer is, you know, you care about the animals, Mm -hmm. you care about their life, about their um, even, I mean, happiness, you oh, know, yeah. and, and I know that may sound silly to no, some people, it's, but it's very, it's important. not silly. Yeah. It's, it's very not. important. And interesting. Most of our staff are females mm-hmm. on the farm. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've had good male farm, you know, farm crews as well, but I find the female workers, it's funny, but the animals relate to them differently. Oh, really? Like bond with them more? Well, yeah. And um, I mean, I've been called the pig whisperer, mm-hmm. but we can just get the animals to do things because we don't push them into something. Mm. We kind of coax them into mm-hmm. it and they don't feel like they're being forced. They feel like there's this flow there. Mm-hmm. I understand that. So with my children, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. The husband will even say, how did you get them to do that? And there's a way of an energy and an yeah. asking that yeah. gets them to do it yeah. rather than a forcing exactly. and then they rebel against the forcing. Right. And you that's know? what we've tried to do with yeah. our entire farm is have a lot of goddess energy mm-hmm. per se. Yeah. I love that. Um, and we have a, you know, a lot of um, goddess areas around the farm. We have a teepee. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've, you know, there's a lot of beautiful goddess energy and, and I feel that that's important for a farm to mm-hmm. have um, because I think animals respond to it and uh, it creates in my opinion a healthier environment wow that's wonderful so i'm hoping i can come and, yeah. and tour it and we could get some photos for yeah. social media and maybe to even share with you know our, our listeners here and um i don't know i think that took care of all of my questions and thoughts about Great. your farm is there anything else that you'd want to note no we just we'd love to have people at the farm um, and, um, anytime we have our website is land to table mm-hmm. So our, that's our primary name for the farm and our certain specialty product lines. Like our pork is called the flying pig ranch mm-hmm. because I've always said when pigs can fly mm-hmm. and I love the name flying pig ranch and our chicken and duck eggs are grace's girls. 
And then our turkey is called Grace's Gobblers. So, but it's landedtablefarm.com. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you so much, Grace. Oh, this thank you wonderful. for having us. Thank you.